Now this leads us to, you know, skips one question, why is this important? And we're going to come back to that one in a second, because this leads us to the second part of this, which is what is MSDB? How does storing to MSDB help me? And when would I use such a thing? Okay, so here you go. We are in the integration services. We have two choices for viewing the stored packages on this server. We're either looking in the SSIS package store or we're looking inside of MSDB. Now, either one of these are, as we talked about earlier, hierarchical. <laughs> uh, they're done with folders here. Notice that we can choose to make new folders, uh, Scott's test. And what that really does is at the file system, it simply creates a folder, just like you said, a new folder uh, called Scott's test. And you can have subfolders within that. Um, it's just at the, in the package store, it's just created that folder. So just knowing where your package store is, uh, then you can see it created this folder called Scott's test. Now in MSDB it's much the same. You create your folders down here. You can call them whatever you want. Uh, if you have created a wizard package, so if you've used the copy database wizard, then it creates a package folder called database name instance, uh, DTS packages, copy database wizard packages. This was from an earlier time, I think when I did the SQL Server 2008 database administration course, course 157. I think I had put that in here. Um, so the MSDB packages, you've got a couple of different ways to get them here. These are actually stored in MSDB database inside of SQL Server. Okay, so you're storing this here, the Learn It First 10 server, which happens to be the same one that we're on in integration services. Then we're storing it inside the MSDB tables. Uh, these tables will store everything about the package. It will actually store the, the SSIS package, uh, and we can then query against it. We can view the packages. Um, down here at the bottom, I'm in the MSDB database here. You can actually see uh, the SSIS log, SSIS package folders, and SSIS packages tables. And these are queryable. We could actually go over here, uh, make a new SQL query in the MSDB database and say select all from, just drag and drop, and you can actually see the folders. These will map to exactly what we saw up here in the integration services. Now there is a hierarchy here. So you can see that uh, learn at first dot 10 and then there's the DTS packages and copy wizard, copy database wizard packages. And if we take a look right here, you can see the parent folder ID. So you can see that zero is the root folder. And if you scroll over, then you can see learn at first dot 10 ccf5 right here and then you can see that the parent folder ID is ccf5 and then this one's folder is I should have kept that and just done a different color but f13c4 and you can see here the parent folder is f13c4 so just one technique of creating a parent child hierarchy in our system and it propagates itself here with how they've done it here in the MSDB folder. Okay, so you can see exactly how that works. You see the 000 folder ID is the actual root MSDB. Uh, and if we did change this uh, over here, you can just uh, SSIS packages here. Um, you can actually see all of the packages that are stored in the MSDB database. Okay, so you can see here's that CDW, uh, the copy database wizard, um, there are several, most of these are related to uh, doing a, sorry, I'm trying to get it over uh, here. In, when I was recording some of the videos for the SQL Server 2008 database administration course, we were doing the data collector, which behind the scenes creates a lot of these packages, and that's what you see here. And if I go over uh, to the data collector, these are all of those packages that you see being listed over here. 
So these were all created when we enabled the data cre the data collector in the course 157, which is not required. You don't have to watch that. I'm not suggesting it. Just pointing out that's where these came from here. So that's MSDB. That's the file system. What's the point? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. What's nice about having these integrated here within the Management Studio is that I can right-click on a particular package and look at all the options. I can upgrade it from 2005 to 2008. I can export this. Where do you want to export it? Well, maybe I want to export it to another SQL Server. Or maybe I want to put it into the package store into another folder. Or maybe I want to just copy it out to the file system. Notice I could just say file system and I can put this one on the desktop. And I say save. We'll talk about these package protection levels uh, a little bit later. I say save. And it's placed it on the desktop. There it is. So I can export it. It's very nice to do this. Um, I, I can, uh, if it's in MSDB over here, we, can have, we have the exact same options. I can define the package roles. We'll talk about the package security a little bit later. Um, so you have a lot of different options here. We could run the package if we needed to. I can delete the package. Okay? Uh, what you could also do is directly from here, you can import a package into the package store. So maybe you've been given a DTSX file. You know how we talked about at the beginning of this where you had uh, an email. You wanted to email a package. Someone emails you a package. You save that. Then you can come in here and you can just import the package from the file system. And you could say here is where I want it to go. I want to import it into the file system. And so now underneath the file system you directly have the video too. Very easy to work with these. Um, not a whole lot to it, right? Just remember that file system means SSIS package store. Okay. Now the other part, going back to the deployment utility, remember we had created in the documents projects, we had the bin and we had that deployment folder and then we had the SSIS deployment manifest which in turn launches DTS install.exe, the package installation wizard. Now this is what we're talking about. Um, we can choose file system, which by default, let me just write this in here to finalize and we'll be finished with this. Um, this will allow both SSIS package store and custom locations. So you notice it doesn't have all three. It doesn't say uh, file system deployment, SSIS package store, SQL server deployment. And that's because the first one is both for the package store and the custom locations defaults to the package store.